In the game A Short Hike, you have a variety of options for pixel size uh, as a filter, basically, for how you want to experience the game. And I was curious how they managed to do this, and if it was something we could recreate in the Godot game engine. Hi, I'm Mike, and today I thought it would be a good idea to dive into how we can uh, emulate this kind of pixel style from 3D that they use in A Short Hike. If I'm honest, the pixel style is not really my aesthetic, so I definitely prefer playing this game with it turned off entirely, but I know that it's something that a lot of people enjoy. So I thought it would be an interesting challenge to see how we can do this in Godot. Now, my first inclination was to use a pixelation shader because, well, I just, that's, that's the hammer that I reach for first, was shaders, uh, even though it's maybe not the best tool to use in this occasion. I will still walk through how to set one up, but I will say that I don't think that's the best way to do that in this particular context. But I think some of the math in the shader is interesting enough that it you may get some use out of that. So we'll do both. We'll start with the shader. So let's hop into Godot and I'll show you how to do that. Here we are in Godot. Some of you may recognize this scene from the video where I recreated some of the visual effects in Tunic. If you are interested in more of a breakdown of the scene and how I set it up, I'll put it in a link to the previous video in the card up top. So for this scene, we'll start with creating a post-processing shader to achieve the pixelation effect. So in order to do post-processing effects in Godot, what we need is a mesh instance that is in front of the camera that will be drawn on the screen. Uh, we'll give it a material. Uh, in this case, I've, I've already created a pixelation shader material and then the shader that goes along with it. So the first thing to do is really think about what pixelation shaders do. Uh, in order to achieve the pixelation look, you need to have neighboring fragments all be the same color. And so there's a couple of ways you can do that, but they all kind of involve figuring out these groups of fragments in order to give them the same color. So I did find a good pixelation shader on Godot shaders by Seraphon. And in this case, in this shader, the first thing that we do is we, we figure out the position of each fragment within these subgroups of fragments we're going to be working with. So to do that, we figure out the X and Y coordinates and where they are in each of these subgroups by taking the modulus of the pixel size. And the modulus is basically taking the remainder of a whole number, whole integer division. For example, five divided by two is two with a remainder of one. So if we do five modulus two, that equals one because one is the remainder in that instance. And if it's four, divi four divided by two is just two with a remainder of zero. So four modulus two is zero. And so we can use this trick with the modulus to basically keep cycling things within a certain range of numbers. And so that's how we know where each fragment is in each subgroup. And now that we know that, we can then start to figure out where the subgroups of pixels are, uh, which is this next bit of code here. And so when we take the floor, which is basically we round down um, and go down to the nearest whole number of the pixel size divided by two, and then subtract the value of X, which in the first it pixel, it'll be zero. Then the next, it'll be one. Uh, and then depending on the pixel size, it'll change based on that. But this is basically trying to give us the same X and Y values for each subgroup. So we can keep looking up the same color data to apply to the albedo. So let's take a look at what it looks like in practice. I have a pixelation shader scene set up. And this is basically just so I can uh, have a debug menu here to change this on the fly so you can see what it looks like as we uh, adjust these values. The button is hooked up to the control, which is basically just setting the shader parameter pixel size based on the value of the pixel size spin box. Let's run the scene and I'll show you what it looks like. So the pixel size of one, this is basically just a one-to-one -one what we would see normally on the screen. Pixel size of two, it'll become a little bit more pixelated. And as we go up, making sure that it's a multiple of two, if, if you don't want weird artifacting, you can see that it just makes the pixels chunkier and more blocky as we go. Now, if we have a non-multiple of two, you can see this weird artifacting that happens around each of these different squares as the math for figuring out which fragment to reference gets pretty wonky. And that's how we can use shaders to achieve this effect. But there are other tools at our disposal, especially in game engines like Godot. And let's uh, hop into that now. And I'll show you how I think I would actually implement this as opposed to a pixelation shader. So if we come over to this pixelation scene, this is a viewport container. Uh, and in the viewport container, we have a viewport and it's there that I've added here, which allows us to basically 
shrink down the size, the size at which we're actually rendering to stretched up into a larger viewport. So we have to make sure that we have the stretch on and then the stretch shrink we can change. And here in the editor, you can see what happens if we uh, increase it. You can see how we get the same kind of pixelation effect that we were getting with the shader. If we play the scene again, here we are with the uh, default size of one. Um, this is lying to you, doesn't need to be multiple of two in this case. We just increase it by one and then it becomes pixelated exactly like the, the pixelation shader that we were looking at before. If we increase it again, it just continues to become more and more pixelated. So this is how I would go about applying a pixelation effect to the game that I am making. Because when you're doing it in a shader like that, when you're doing a post-processing shader, you're still rendering you're still processing each of the fragments on the screen, which if your resolution is 4K resolution, you're doing that 4,000 times for each fragment. One of the benefits of doing this way is that it still works in Godot 4, except it's called a sub viewport container and a sub viewport, but essentially it works exactly the same way. We still have the stretch shrink value here that we can play around with. And as a bit of a bonus, when I was poking around Godot shaders, I found one called 3D Pixel Art Outline and Highlight Shader that does post-processing and basically gives you little bits of outlines along the objects so you can have a bit more definition on them. This one was done by Leo Peltola. And if you just add it to the quad mesh that we were using before, so you can see the extra definition here on all of the edges of these different shapes. Uh, ignore the fact that all the grass is moving weirdly. I, there's an issue with the grass moving shader in Godot 4 that I haven't worked out yet. And there we have it, a couple of ways to implement a pixelation style filter for your game. If you found this video useful or entertaining, hitting the like button is a great way to help get the video out to a wider audience. If you haven't heard of a short hike before, I do talk about it in this video here, where I also talk about why you might want to consider making your open world smaller uh, but that's it for me for now. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves and good luck with your games. I'll see you next time.